Hi, my name is Shaji Nathan, and I do product management for IPI, and I'm responsible for the product line at IPI. So I will quickly um, go over to what Sanjay just reinforced. We basically uh, focused on either edge of the network. Uh, as, um, as, as you, if you look at your daily habits, right, you pretty much use some kind of a, a, a computing device, and on that you have applications. And those applications basically are all cloud bound. So we focused on either edge of the network. Basically, we started with uh, data center networking or with uh, traditional leaf spine kind of architectures. And then we focused on the other end of the network where you need a very high bandwidth. That is at the access side. So, uh, and slowly, uh, once we started getting that access part uh, completed, uh, basically on the wireless as well as from the wireline side, broadband access by way of uh, passive optical networking, uh, carrier ethernet networking, and the standard uh, IP MPLS networking that is already in place in most uh, networks today. And moved on to aggregation, optical transport, and uh, um, finally to the core. So how did we actually do that, right? So let me uh, basically showcase exactly what we did. We took uh, two sets of software. One is that software that runs very close to the hardware. That would be your network operating system. We call it the OCNOS, which is uh, which stands for Open Compute Network OS. Uh, essentially, what it is is it's a real-time OS uh, built on top of Linux, and uh, essentially has a, a a layer which allows us to port very quickly on any kind of hardware. Essentially, has a, a hardware abstraction layer and a service layer. Uh, that service layer basically works with uh, any kind of COTS silicon, or it can be an ASIC, it can basically be an FPGA, or a standard processors. So given that abstraction, um, then we went on and built a modern control plane. That control plane basically has uh, feature richness in terms of ITU, IEEE, IETF standards. Uh, we, uh, our legacy was basically you know, selling source code to customers who actually built this network equipment. So essentially we started with that uh, as the basis of our platform and mated it with Linux and we ended up with the real-time operating system. And that actually enables us to move from one edge of the network to the other edge of the network. Essentially what we do is it has decomposable service components. Uh, so by way of control plane, uh, we would start with the feature sets that we need and essentially mate it with the appropriate hardware open compute hardware, and we come up with a solution there. So that enables us to do the seamless interworking. Uh, since we support uh, the full slew of protocols that an existing network has, it allows us to do service insertion in a seamless manner. Uh, and I'll ex explain with examples how we actually do that. I'll start with the access networking and my colleagues basically will go in uh, exactly how we do on the transport side and also on the data center side. Uh, and uh, uh, once you have this network operating system, the next challenge is basically how do you manage it? Because there is an existing network management in place, um, element management system mostly in most networks in place. So we basically have to make sure that it interworks. So uh, we start off with uh, CLI, SNMP, and NetConf as the base uh, northbound interfaces to our operating system. And essentially, uh, offer a solution which can actually work with any kind of um, element management system that is already in place. So let me start off with uh, an example with wireless networking, how exactly we did that. The backhaul is the area where uh, you, know, you need a lot more bandwidth. So what usually happens is when we walk into a network, essentially they have a 4G deployment, they want to scale it. So what we do is we basically take a a cell site gateway. Uh, it's based on um, open compute standards. So uh, I'll give you some examples of the boxes that we qualify. Uh, it comes up with a, uh, a full slew of uh, support in terms of 10, 100 gigabit ethernet uh, capability. Forwarding in terms of uh, forwarding ASIC, uh, we uh, either uh, choose Broadcom or any available silicon that is already there. We essentially use that uh, silicon and on top of that, we port the operating system. So uh, two aspects are important, right? One is basically connectivity. So in terms of speeds and feeds, uh, 
10 gigabit ethernet, 100 gigabit ethernet, 25 gig ethernet. So we select that appropriate platform. Then on top of that, uh, you basically need timing and synchronization. So 1588 synchronous ethernet, for instance. So we start off with uh, that base platform. And then what you have to do is to interwork with the aggregation layer. So typically when we walk in uh, into any kind of network, you would have a P router that is already in place, which is uh, supporting that existing network. So what that means is uh, we would have to support protocols, which would be like uh, MPLS and uh, carrier ethernet, depending upon the transport that that particular provider, provider would use. And uh, uh, once we have that, our next uh, effort is basically to take that network and essentially um, uh, add the, once you added scale and capacity, how do we prep it up so that they can actually start looking at some of the next level architectures, which is basically open RAN and also 5G capability. So for that, uh, what we need to do is next is to tackle the front hall portion of the equation, right? So the, now you have a 4G network and a 5G network that is about to come around on the periphery. So uh, what that means is basically being able to connect to a radio that is already in place and you have an EPC core that is running uh, somewhere in the data center. So uh, what we would do is basically, you know, Okay, uh, let me just uh, stick with uh, this diagram here for, uh, so what we would do is we would basically take a gateway that essentially has uh, the capability to do both uh, CIPRI as well as eCIPRI. eCIPRI to uh, connect with a 5G uh, next generation radio and the CIPRI protocol to connect with an existing radio. So that allows you to do 4G and 5G both simultaneously on an existing network. And timing and synchronization, once we have set up the backhaul, that follows through on the front hall side as well. So time sensitive networking becomes an important key aspect of that. So we provide that kind of support. And the platform hardware that we choose essentially has to have a mix of port densities in terms of 10 gigabit, 25 gigabit, and uh, should also be able to support CIPRI as well as eCIPRI. And the other thing that we need is to now interwork with an existing uh, carrier converge access switch, or if there is none, we basically provide solutions with uh, open compute hardware again, uh, which uh, supports carrier ethernet IP MPLS. So um, once you do that, there are radios that are out there, um, which basically are far flung and may not have fiber connectivity there. So the next uh, uh, thing that we need to tackle here is essentially being able to connect uh, uh, you know, that, uh, that radio that is further out. So usually that means microwave. But once you bring microwave into the equation, you need to uh, think in terms of traffic engineering as well as uh, you know, uh, resiliency. So that resiliency piece, uh, the interworking piece is built into our operating system. So we bring the baseband intelligence as well. So essentially we can um, take an existing network and uh, attach to that uh, radio that is far flung and provide that interworking there. So if you look at uh, um, the full end-to-end -end capability, um, it, now the network is now ready and you can start decomposing the elements, right? So you start with the G node B, E node B, and you break it into the, its logical components. And essentially you can distribute this. Uh, so you can take a network, essentially what I'm trying to convey here is you can take an existing network that is 4G enabled and take, the, uh, take it into the 5G. And then from there, you can start decomposing it so that it becomes an ORAN compliant uh, network. So uh, if you do this in a series of um, concerted moves, you can actually add cell capacity without actually disrupting your existing network but at the same time, you're prepping up the network. And as we build that, we can also look into the next generation of packet technologies, right? Um, so if you have a very complex IP MPLS network, uh, you would have state information coupled in the network across every segment. So now you can use the same data plane, the MPLS forwarding plane, and de-feature the control plane, so using segment routing. And eventually when you're ready to make that transition, you can go completely segment routed on a SR V6. So 
uh, with the software that we've built in, we are able to actually take an existing network, interwork, add scale and capacity at that edge where you need it, and also bring in components of the network that you already have. And plus new components can come in. So you, you do that seamless transition from point A to point B. And we would show you an example of how that is done. Uh, we have recreated this in the lab here, and we would actually show you a phone call actually going through one such network where we have assumed that there is an existing 4G network and we come in and put in a backhaul capability there, add scale and capacity, the, do the interworking from a IP MPLS standpoint, do the quality of service, then prep up the network so that uh, we'll actually show you that life cycle, how we do that in an accelerated manner. So that uh, explains our strategy with respect to end-to-end uh, -end networking on the wireless side. So how we can take a network of today, scale it, have the 5G come up and do that 5G cutover and then take you to that ORAN world when, when you're finally ready. And uh, another aspect, key element of this is uh, the network management aspect of it. So we have this domain controller, essentially that provides you with the uh, capability to manage all aspects of the packet network, the uh, optical backhaul that is necessary, as well as the front hall, as well as backhaul capability. So you manage everything through this uh, domain orchestrator. And we have built in capabilities so that you can also have third party applications that can be co-resident. And the, uh, if, if there is a network that is already in place, as I mentioned, you know, our operating system basically has the CLI, SNMP and NetConf. So we can seamlessly slide in into an existing domain controller. But if this is a greenfield network, we do provide the capability to orchestrate all the network elements that we build. So this uh, gives you a very quick overview on how we actually take a existing network and essentially scale, add capacity, and take it to the, that 5G world. Now, uh, I talked about the wireless access network and how we could disaggregate that access network and essentially add, add scale and capacity. Once you do that, uh, as you know, from once you go from 4G to 5G, you essentially need a whole lot of bandwidth at that aggregation layer. So what are we doing there? Uh, so there, we are basically now focused on getting that next level of interfaces, which is like a 400 gig, 800 gig interfaces, right? So you start off with um, 100 gig, 64 by 100 gig provider edge devices and scale, add scale and capacity with 400 to 800 gig. So essentially what we do is that same piece of software that you saw there at the edge, we basically take that and mate it with the appropriate hardware. So this hardware is capable of either, um, you know, interfaces that has the modern interfaces, which would be like QSFP DD, uh, long reach, uh, which is like ZR, ZR plus, which gives you that service ceiling, which allows you without having a, a line system in between, you're able to extend that radius out from the carrier core. And uh, here again, our approach is basically the same with uh, whatever transport technologies you're currently using, we will come in with that uh, uh, level. So be it carrier ethernet or IP MPLS uh, using LDP RSVP signaling, we start off with that and then uh, prep you up in, in a way so that you can actually start migrating onto, uh, you know, SR um, like a segment routing using uh, the MPLS data plane or eventually converting to SRV6. But at the same time, we have the capability if you if it's a complete green, greenfield network and you want to bring it up on the fly, we have the capability to actually leapfrog and then use the latest and greatest in terms of hardware, hot silicon, as well as uh, uh, optics, and be able to take you to that high capacity network. Uh, and we will show you an example of how we do that on the transport side and on the aggregation side. So this is in a in a very um, fast, um, you know, a thousand foot overview of what we did with that same piece of software. Start off with one edge, and essentially add scale and capacity, and cut and cut you over to a modern network. And uh, here, uh, the idea here is, uh, you know, network transitions happen in an evolutionary path. It's not a rip and replace. Basically, we start off with 
whichever network element you're comfortable, wherever your pain points are, we start off with that segment and essentially take you to a journey, a series of tra uh, transitions, which allow you to that end goal of having a completely modern, uh, you know, SDN transport-based network. So that's the, that's the crux of, uh, you know, the access. I talked about the access, wireless access, how we scale that wireless network, aggregation network. And then uh, eventually, you know, I just want to talk about the form factors that we support. And um, so the way we do things is like uh, today, we solve that immediate problem today. Then in the intermediate, there is a step which allows you to uh, go to that next level. And far out into the future, as newer hardware comes in, we want you to be able to leverage that same software, same network management system, and be able to leverage that as and when you're ready to do that um, cutover. So we are working on silicon uh, that is uh, at uh, 32 by 800. Uh, and these uh, network silicon is now coming in the open compute and the multiple silicon vendors here. So essentially our, um, the way we approach things is we, uh, while we are firmly planted in the present, we also look into the future. So we have parallel programs as and when a chipset comes in, we start evaluating it and start uh, looking through the porting process, essentially working very closely with the ASIC vendor, the ODM, the optics vendor. So essentially we are able to actually, you know, bridge that gap whenever you are ready. And when that cost point and the uh, devices become available. So um, that was my section. And I would now hand it over to Srikant who will talk about the transport side, exactly like uh, how we transform the access and the aggregation side. Uh, Srikant will talk about how, uh, you know, you can actually take a existing transport network and essentially add scale and capacity using both the horizontal uh, disaggregation. So in that horizontal disaggregation, I mean, by way of uh, a new um, a, a DSP comes in, a new optics comes in, and a new chassis comes in. We want to be able to make use of that new line system comes in. We want our software to be able to leverage that capability. So Shri, uh, so I'll hand it over to Srikant. Uh, uh, if there are any questions, you know, I'm willing to take it right now. Yeah, hey, Chris here, I got a question. Um, regarding the uh, form factors you have on the screen here right now, um, yeah. would those be capable of taking in, you know, multiple full tables and, and things like that? Or would they, since uh, the hardware they're based off of, would they be more of just like a, true p core router or you know maybe a limited table size yeah so so we have uh, various network silicon actually so there are some like uh, if you're uh, familiar with the uh, broadcom um, platforms essentially they have this straighter dnx and straighter xgs series of platforms so the dnx platforms actually come in form factors of um, they have a series that starts all the way from 60 all the way to 800 and the next generation which goes to terabit scale and uh, that DNX series is unique in the sense that you can add extra TCAM. So we have routers today, uh, starting with uh, you know 300 gigabit all the way to 800 uh, a gigabit aggregate uh, capacity, which have this extra TCAM. So those are able to take full internet route tables. So it comes in a 48 by 10, 10 Gbps uh, form factor, or it can basically be 32 by 100. And uh, as you go to that extreme scale, uh, you have these platforms which basically have a fabric interface and you can concatenate and decompose chassis to actually do that. For instance, uh, let me show you an example how you could do that. So you uh, build a cloth fabric and essentially this would be a fabric interface, a fabric chipset, and this would be the uh, leaf switch. So it's like a traditional TOR-like organization, but you can actually uh, um, build a very large capacity chassis by disaggregating. It's called the distributed uh, clause uh, DDoR as uh, tip puts it. So uh, yes, so to answer your question, you know, you can start uh, as low as 300 Gbps with extra TKM and go all the way up in a step function, basically. I had a quick question. If you go back one slide, please. Sure. So you said today, right? That's IP MPLS CE, you know, yeah. L2L3 VPN. Yeah. And then you say tomorrow, SR, SRV6, right? Yep. So how? tell me how I get from today to tomorrow. Yeah. So today, uh, basically what you do is like um, you start off with uh, with your existing network. Let's say you have a, 
um, network that is a seamless MPLS. And you're going to be using either RSVP or LDP based signaling. So what you do is you take that section of the network that you want to converge. Um, most of the silicon is capable of actually in the forwarding plate, they're capable of doing that. So our software basically comes in a modular fashion, right? So in the IP MPLS, we also include the segment routing capability. So what you can do is you can essentially configure that segment route uh, based network um, right on, the, on, on that existing, uh, existing platform if the platform is capable of actually doing um, uh, uh, SR routing, right? So you start off with that transition. So you decouple and on the, uh, you do the interworking on the SR LDP boundary, uh, which again, our software, control plane software will actually do that. Then when you're ready, uh, if your silicon, if your silicon is capable of actually doing SR V6, you can start off migrating, configure that SR V6 data plane portion. You can uh, configure some of the ports in SR V6 mode and trans and basically use the same same software. So you don't change the control plane software at all. Essentially, it is the same software. We just leverage the network silicon to do that. 